This video is for caregivers and how you can more effectively help somebody out of a chair. Now, over the years of working with people with Parkinson's and their caregivers, I have seen so many times where the caregivers have back problems, shoulder problems, knee or hip problems because of how they're helping an individual out of a chair. Now, commonly, if you are working in a medical field, you've been taught how to move people in and out of chairs, in and out of bed, but you as a caregiver have never been instructed in how to use proper body mechanics and how to protect yourself when you're assisting somebody else. And that's what this video is about. So body mechanics is how you position yourself to minimize strain on your body. But equally important is the body mechanics of the person that you're helping. So you minimize the effort on both of you when you're performing an activity such as getting out of a chair. These are additional videos that you can use to reference more detailed information regarding helping you help the individual get out of a chair or different scenarios. So the first video here, Chair Transfers Part 1, goes into much more detail in terms of how to position your body when getting out of a chair and things you can do to help make it easier. Then the next video is how to use a gait belt. Now it may sound really simple. It's like, well, it's like a belt buckle and it's pretty self-explanatory, but oftentimes it's not. And there's a lot of good information in this video that I think would be helpful to you as a caregiver uh, to help use it properly and safely. And then there's a video on car transfers, which is in essence getting up from a seated position and some ideas you can possibly use depending on your situation. Then there's getting in and out of a dining room chair. Now towards the end of the video, it has more caregiver specific information, but I think it would be advantageous to look through the whole video to see if there's anything that might apply for you. In terms of body mechanics, there are three steps to follow to make it easier to get out of a chair. The first one is scooting forward in a chair. And the reason for scooting forward is so that you can get your feet underneath you, which will make it easier. So then the second step is getting your feet under your knees. The last step is leaning forward and you need to lean forward far enough so that your body weight can get over your base of support to allow you to stand up. Now this video is going to show you all three steps and how you can assist the individual with each of these steps and minimizing strain on yourself. Now, in addition to those three steps, it's very critical to help synchronize your efforts when doing any of these steps. And the reason for that is, is if the person you're helping and you are working together at the same time, it makes it easier. You're distributing the workload. But if you're doing all the work and the other person isn't synchronized to helping you at the same time, then you end up doing more of the work, hence more strain on you. So let's get started. We're going to start out with step one, scooting. I've included four options regarding how to assist somebody with scooting, but I would highly recommend getting an individualized approach from a physical therapist to see what works best for you. But these are some ideas that you can try. When you're helping somebody scoot forward, the caregiver should look at the position of their own feet so that they're stable when they're helping somebody. So typically, if you're moving somebody forward or back, you want to stagger your feet uh, one ahead of foot one ahead of the other so that you're stable going forward and back. So look at your foot positioning when you're helping somebody scoot. One method of helping somebody scoot is to help them shift their weight off of their buttocks on the one side to reduce the friction between their buttocks and the chair to allow them to scoot easier. So this is what you can do. Again, your feet are going to be a bit staggered. You're going to help shift the weight to the one side. And then I'm going to get my hand behind the knee and I'm going to pull on it like that. So that helps slide the buttocks forward. 
Then I'm going to repeat on the other side. He's going to shift his weight, and I'm helping him shift his weight. And then I'm going to pull on that side. And then I just repeat until he's at the edge of the chair. Another way to help weight shift is to place both hands on one side. And then just naturally your body starts leaning that way. And then you can facilitate it with your other hand. Then what you're gonna do, you're gonna pull because there's less friction there, and then you would repeat with the opposite side. Another option to help somebody scoot, who happens to have, if they've got strong arms, they've got good flexibility in their shoulders, they can help you unweight their buttocks while you pull. So this is how it's done. They put their hands back on the armrest, and they're just gonna push down to reduce the pressure on the seat. So go ahead and push, and then I pull on the knees so that that helps them slide. Another option of helping somebody scoot forward is you have them lean to one side as before, but then you're gonna put one hand behind the knee, but also one hand behind the buttocks, and then on the count of three, you're gonna pull forward behind the knee, and you're gonna pull forward behind the buttocks. On the count of three, one, two, three. And then what you then do, you go to the other side, and you're gonna repeat with the other side. So you can have the hands there to help them lean, or if they can't do it, their hand can be on their lap, and you can assist with the leaning. And then one hand behind the knee, and one hand behind the buttocks on the count of three. We're gonna scoot one, two, three. And then you keep repeating that until they're on the edge of the seat. This is simply a close-up of your hand positioning. Your one hand is right by the crease of the knee, and then your other hand is right behind the buttocks. The second stage in getting somebody in position is getting their feet back underneath them. Now, it can make a difference with difficulty if somebody is wearing like running shoes with soft rubbery soles and you're trying to move the feet back on carpeting. It's going to make it a lot more difficult. So just think about what shoe wear the person is wearing and what kind of floor surface you're working on so that that can make a difference in terms of how easy or difficult it is to move the person's feet. Before standing up, you should consider the foot position of the person you're helping. And oftentimes I see caregivers going down and helping position the feet, and that's pretty strenuous on the caregiver. A less strenuous way of helping adjust the foot positioning is to use your foot to help manipulate the feet. So the first thing you want to do is separate the feet. So I'm going to take my foot and I'm going to wiggle it in between. And you can see it's helping separate the feet. And I got to get all the way back to the heels so the heels are apart as well. Once I've done that, then you can use your foot to help slide his feet back like that. The last part of the sequence of helping somebody up from a chair is making sure they are leaning forward enough. This is a very common uh, problem for people with Parkinson's because they have the perception that they're leaning forward a lot and they have this fear of falling forward. And as a result, they don't lean forward enough and that impedes them from getting out of a chair. So. Uh, this whole series is going to talk about leaning forward enough and how a caregiver can help at different levels of difficulty. So the first level is just helping somebody a little bit. And what you do is you put the hand on their back and what you're going to do, you're going to push in a downward diagonal direction so that you are getting their shoulders over their knees and that helps get them their weight over their body so they can stand up easier. And I'm gonna push down and I'm gonna make sure he keeps leaning forward as he stands up. So on the count of three, let's stand up. One, two, three. 
and I keep pushing him forward and he stands up. If just putting your hand on the person's back to help them lean forward is not enough to help them stand up, then what you want to do is you want to have additional support with your arm under his armpit. So if it's his left arm, it's your left arm that goes under his left arm. If you're standing on the other side, it would be your right arm under his right arm. So here we have the, the four, my forearm under his armpit. And then also as important is my foot positioning. I have one foot close by the toes of his foot, and then my other foot is placed uh, behind the leg of the chair. And the reason that we're doing that is we're going from back here to up front. So I need to be stable myself to help this person. If I have my feet close together, then I'm, I'm leaning then I'm leaning all the way forward and I'm going to lose my balance. So it's real important to have your feet apart so that you stay stable. Okay, so I've got my feet in the right position. I'm going to put my left forearm under his left armpit and then my hand is behind his back. So now what we're going to do, we're going to stand up on the count of three, but let's get him in a little more in position. On the count of three, we're going to stand up. One, two, three. And then I guide him with under the armpit and I'm pushing him with my other hand. It's important to note when you have the one arm under the armpit that you don't try and pull up with that because if you do that, you could hurt the individual's shoulder. The Having the arm under the armpit is more of a guide. If you're using it as more than a guide, then you should really start using a gait belt so that you can safely get the individual up without hurting their shoulder. Yep. Somebody that needs yet more assistance, the caregiver should be using a gait belt to help with transfers. And this individual, they've, we've already done the scooting to the edge of the chair, the feet are back underneath and apart. And so it's a matter of coordinating your efforts to help stand up. On the count of three, we're going to stand up. And the hand that's going to go on the gate belt is the hand that's closest to the back of the chair. So I'm going to grab it palm up. So that gives me the best leverage. Then my left hand, or the hand that's closest to the walker, is going to go on the back. And then on the, I'm going to help him lean forward. You're going to lean forward a little bit more. Okay. The leaning forward is really critical. On the count of three, we're going to stand up. One, two, three. He's going to push from the arms of the chair. I'm going to keep him leaning forward as he moves his hands to the walker. And then when I feel that his, he has his balance, then I let up on my hand. Because sometimes when people initially stand up, they tend to lean back a little bit. So this is like a balance check to make sure he's got his balance. Synchronizing your efforts and helping somebody get up really helps distribute the workload between the person you're helping and yourself. If you start helping somebody before they're ready to get up, then the caregiver does most of the work. And over time, the person you're helping continues to do less and less because they don't have the time to help you. So it's really important to synchronize your efforts. So he's attempting to get up while you're attempting to help. So the work is distributed. So how you do that is he's already in position. He's already scooted to the edge of the chair. Feet are underneath him and I'm going to help him lean forward. And on the count of three, we're going to stand up, okay? So I'm going to count to three, but if I don't feel him starting to kick in to try and stand up, I'm going to wait for him to start trying, and that's the time that I start helping. So, okay, here we go. On the count of three, we're going to stand up. One, two, three. Now he's not kicking in yet, I still don't feel, now he's trying, and now is the time that I start helping him. 
So there can be a delay from literally a couple seconds to there can be a delay to 30 seconds to a whole minute before you feel the individual starting to help. So it's really important to wait for that because otherwise the, pe the person that you're helping is going to start fully relying on your help and not attempt. Generally speaking, when you're helping somebody get out of a chair, you want them to use the armrest. Now, the only exception to the rule that I can think of is people who have dementia. Some individuals will have a very tight grip on the armrest, which then interferes with your ability to help them get up. And for those individuals, you want them to have their hands on the walker so that it allows them to get up easier. So here's a situation where I'm trying to get him up and he's tightly gripped on the hand rest and I just really cannot get him up. He's like bolted to the seat. So instead, what I'm gonna start doing is I'm going to move the walker close to the seat so that when I put his hands on the seat and he pulls on it, the chair can help stabilize the walker. All right, so from here, I'm gonna help get one hand on the walker and then I'm gonna get the other hand on the walker. And it's up to you, you can walk around and get that hand on the walker so you don't have to reach so much if you're having back trouble. And then I put the other hand on the walker over here. Now from here, just to uh, trigger him to want to get up to go somewhere, I ask him, do you want to go to the kitchen or a room that he likes to go to? So then he'll have, um, it'll just trigger him to want to get up easier. So then I'm going to hold down the walker with my one hand because he's going to be pulling on it. And then I'm going to have my other hand on the gate belt so that I can help lift him up. All right, let's, let's go to the kitchen, okay? All right, let's go to the kitchen. Okay, so then I was able to help him with the gate belt. I anchored the walker here and that makes it easier for both of us. But when you're helping with people with dementia, you want to use as few words or as few instructions as possible because if you start giving them a lot of instructions, they get more confused and they don't know what to do. So just keep it simple. So in summary, you want to make sure you use good body mechanics to reduce or minimize strain on your body. In synchronizing your efforts, you not only share the workload, but you make sure that the person you're helping continues to be an active participant in the activity like getting out of a chair, and it also helps maintain their strength because they are then working harder. Make sure you use a gait belt when needed. So if you need to do more than help minimally, you should put a gait belt on. It'll help the safety and the effort for both you and the person that you're helping. Working with people with dementia can be a little bit tricky because you don't know which instructions they'll understand and which ones they won't. So a lot of it is trial and error as far as how you cue these individuals. You want to make sure that you simplify your instructions and minimize the words that you use. Make them practical, your instructions, like let's get up. Instead of saying first we're going to scoot and then we're going to get your feet underneath, just say let's get up and let's go to the bathroom, to the kitchen, what have you. Sometimes there are key words that the person with dementia really associates with. And those are the words that you may want to use more often to help get them to get up out of a chair or whatever it is you're trying to help them do. And finally, seeing a physical therapist who can help you with your individual needs regarding how to help the person you're taking care of. Usually in physical therapy, I see the, the person that has the Parkinson's that comes in and then they come in with their caregiver. 
and it ends up that they pri primarily would benefit from caregiver training. So the focus of therapy is then on caregiver training. So just think of that as an option because it can make a huge difference on how much strain you put on yourself. Thank you.